Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm sure most of you can tell what's in the box. A new vice for the mill. I've had this mill now for almost 4 months and I'm very impressed with what it's capable of and the parts I can make with it. However, considering how much I've upgraded my mini lathe, you might be surprised to learn that I've done almost nothing to the mill. Partly because I wanted to get the lathe upgrades over and done with before I started on the mill, and partly because I needed a fair amount of time on the mill before I could decide what needed upgrading. And I think everyone can agree that the first thing I probably should have done a long time ago was upgrade the vise that I've been using. The vise that I've been using isn't really set up for mill work. I got it free with the mill and I used it as a short term solution. And to be fair to it, it was able to produce some really good parts. I mean even cutting steel, it did a really good job. And as a result of that, I felt fine to keep on using it. However, in the past few weeks, the jaw lift got a lot worse. I tried tightening it, I tried doing everything, and it pretty much solved nothing. So I took it as a sign to finally upgrade the vise. What I finally settled on was a 4 inch mill vise. If you go to eBay and type in mill vise, you'll probably see the exact same one that I got. Total cost was about $100 Australian, including shipping. Now I'm really not expecting much. According to the box, this is about 12 kilos, and that's about 10.5 kilos for the vise. So even if everything isn't perfect, I think 11 kilos of cast iron should at least account for something. So looking in the box, we have a certificate, some N10 T bolts, a handle for the vise. There's no indentation for a ball bearing, so it looks like it can easily slide off the vise. It's a pretty rough finish on the handle, it's cast. If I wanted to pass it off as something good, I'd call it rustic. And finally, we have the vise. And you know what? Pretty decent first impressions. All the surfaces look really ground, at least the ones that need to be. The action is pretty smooth and visually all the surfaces mate pretty nicely. You could certainly do a lot worse for 100 bucks. This vise has a key between the body and the fixture. I don't know but the key looks a little bit sketchy, at least to me. But at this price, I don't think I could ask for anything more. I know some more expensive vices have it all moulded into one part to be a bit more rigid. But you usually see those on the bigger 6 inch vices and on curt vices, so I'm pretty happy with this. Upon closer inspection, the paint comes pre-chipped, saves me doing it myself I guess. It's the same issue that I had with the lathe. It wouldn't surprise me if the lack of primer on these cast iron parts is the reason why the paint chips so easily. The lead screw housing has one of those button oilers for lubricating the lead screw. That would be pretty awesome, except I broke it on the first try. And for anyone wondering, this isn't one of those Anglock style vices. It has the conventional thread housing, which you can see at the bottom. Looking at the manual, it seems to be roughly translated. Though curiously, on the specs of the vice, they list the weight of the 100mm vice as being 18 kilos which is about 7 kilos more than the vise actually weighs. And according to the checklist, the accuracy of the vise is to within 0.03 and 0.04 millimeters, which seems a little bit low even for Chinese vices. I realize I might be sounding a little bit critical and snarky towards this vise, and I really don't intend to be. For hobby work on this relatively inexpensive mill, this vise will be more than enough. When mounting it, I originally wanted to mount it using the middle T-slots. However, I soon realised if I did that, the vice would be a little bit too far back and I wouldn't be able to reach the fixed jaw. So I had to settle with using the front T-slots, which is not a huge issue. Having now bought the vice, I also had to buy a parallel set to machine parts with it. These are essentially pieces of ground in steel of various heights that allow you to raise your work in the vise to an appropriate height. Like most tools, they come in a waxed coating which is never fun to remove. A good soaking in some methylated spirits does the job. Now a parallel set such as this is about $70. They don't come any cheaper than that, 
but these would be good enough for hobby use. I measured them with some micrometers and they were all within 10 microns with respect to each other, which is really good. As a quick test, I loaded in some aluminium and faced it using the fly cutter. There's certainly an improvement with regards to clamping pressure and I can certainly feel it when taking cuts. The biggest improvement that I saw, however, was the reduction in jaw lift. It was really becoming a big problem with the old vice and here it is minimal and I'm really liking that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the vice and I can see myself using this for a long time to come. And that leads me to part 2 of the well overdue upgrades. And that's of course, a digital readout. The biggest problem I've encountered with the mill is backlash in two directions. On a lathe, it's not a huge issue, but on a mill, you really need to be aware of which direction to account for backlash and how much to account for that backlash. A digital readout, however, is like a digital caliper and shouldn't have any backlash. As well as that, it was also really necessary to have one now since the vise covers the lead screw dial. So opening the box, we have a support arm, we have a manual, the digital display, and some bolts. In the other box, we have the linear scales. The short one goes on the Y axis and the long one goes on the X axis. All up, the cost for this kit was about $200. I considered getting the 3 axis to attach to the head, but since this quill already has a DRO, I didn't think it was hugely necessary. The resolution for this one is also 5 microns. You can get them in 1 micron or 5 micron, but considering that this is a hobby mill and all my equipment can only measure to about 10 microns, I didn't think it was hugely necessary to pay the extra cost. The first rail that I decided to install would be the Y axis. I'll mount it on the left side of the mill underneath the table. Mounting this will be a bit of a challenge. There's a steel extrusion that will prevent me from mounting the rail, so I need to make some standoffs. To complicate matters even further, this surface is slightly tapered with the exception of this thin slot. So I got the aluminium that I faced before and I faced it on the other side. I then marked it out and cut off two sections. I then faced the parts and then used an end mill to cut away some metal on the face that gets mounted to the base. I then drilled and counterbored a hole to accept an M6 screw. I drilled and tapped an M5 hole for the linear scale adjustment screws. The first standoff bolts on the front, so I'll drill and tap an M6 hole for a mounting screw. And even though I triple check the measurements, drilling into an expensive machine never gets any easier. The standoff gets bolted onto the base. I then mounted the rear bracket and bolted the linear rail on. The top rail is fixed, so I need a bracket to attach the bottom scale to the moving table. The rails come with some 5mm aluminium brackets, but they weren't suitable for this job. Instead, I resorted to my old milling table. It looks a bit rough, but it's the perfect width for the job. I faced it, and an adjustment slot was milled, and several holes drilled into it to attach it to the scale. On the underside of the table, I drilled into the extrusion and I tapped an M5 hole to attach the bracket to the extrusion. The bracket is then screwed to the scale and the bracket as well as the whole scale is screwed in. Before everything is tightened, I'll use a dial test indicator to ensure that the rail is parallel to the travel of the table. 
I used my small machinist hammer, using the nylon end, to only tap the ends. And with that done, the assembly can be tightened. Next we can install the x-axis DRO on the table. You can mount it on either the front or the back of the table. I've seen both done, and each of them have their own pros and cons. But for me, I think mounting it on the front would be the best way to go. Mostly because it's a lot easier to show, and I can make use of the front T-slots, which means I don't have to drill into the table. I should mention first that my linear scale is slightly too long for the table. It was a mistake on my part when I bought it, I don't think I was looking at the actual dimensions, but it's not a huge issue. I tried several different brackets to get the rails mounted with various levels of success. I was about to machine some solid aluminium when I found some hollow rectangular stock which made the job a lot easier. I cut off several lengths with the hacksaw and I cleaned them up in the mill. I then marked out a hole pattern and drilled them to accept some M6 screws. The far end hole will be tapped for M5 to accept the screw for the linear scales. In total I made 4 brackets. The top two will hold the scales in place, the middle is a spacer, and the bottom will mount the scale to the mill. I fashioned up some square T-nuts, very similar to those that I've used in CNC routers. I first installed the center piece, and this was then followed by the two end pieces. I then marked out and drilled a hole for the bottom mounting bolt and tapped it for M5. The scale was then bolted on and leveled, much in the same way as before. The final thing left to do was assemble the display. There weren't any instructions in the book about assembling it, so a lot of this was done through trial and error. I'm not a huge fan of the bracket, so I'm probably going to make my own at a later date. A lot of people mount the bracket to the mill, but I'd rather screw it into the table, at least for the moment. With everything screwed in, it's time to start the DRO. And you know what, I'm pleasantly surprised. No issues at all. It booted up and started working right away. I'll have to test it with some gauge blocks or an indicator to see how accurate it is. But for the moment, I'm really happy with how it performs. I still have to learn and read all the buttons. The display is a little bit different to the ones I've used in the past, but so far it seems to be working really well. Now I'm not 100% finished. I haven't gotten around to making the covers for the linear scales. I wasn't very happy with the included ones, so I'm going to make my own. Apart from that, I'm very happy with how this turned out, and I hope you learned something from this video. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.